Welcome to St James Online. My name is Caroline, I'm one of the assistant ministers here at St James and today I'm filming from my kitchen table. This week we start a new series, a five part series on Amazing Grace and remember how good God is to us for his kindness and mercy to us in the Lord Jesus and for Jesus saving death for us. We'll also think about how the gospel changes our lives and allows us to be people of grace and forgiveness. We've written some devotional materials, so you might like to take the chance to read the Bible each day and to respond in prayer and just to dig deep and remember how much God loves you. Today on St. James Online, we're going to join Jerry and Miles and hear about things that are happening at St. James at the moment. We're going to cross to Susie and Simon from 9am congregation in their home to hear about some of the things they've been doing and also have them lead us in prayer. And today I'm interviewing Barry Boost, a bit of a legend around here at St. James. He's a man who just is very aware of God's love for him and he has taught generations of kids and young people about the Lord Jesus. We'll also hear from Al on the first of our sermons from Amazing Grace. Hey St James, my name is Jerry. I'm one of the assistant ministers here. Uh, I'm the assistant minister for our first priority, which is reaching the lost. And now we have a new assistant minister on our staff team. Uh, what's your name and what priority are you looking after? Yeah, uh, my name is Miles Elton and I'm the Priority 2 Minister, and uh, yeah, which is Discipling the Young. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. We're so excited to have you on board, Miles, you and your family. Um, what are you excited about um, your role and this season? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a weird season. It's a weird moment to start a job and uh, to be yeah, distant yet trying to connect with people. At the same time, I'm really excited by the opportunities created um, in, in cutting back things and having to really reassess what we're on about, what we care about, what we want to build into the future and where God might be leading us. So I'm really excited by the opportunity created in this COVID moment. Mm -hmm. I'm saddened by the circumstance, but I'm excited by the opportunity for us as St. James and particularly with Disciple the Young, what that looks like in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of opportunities, we've been talking about Alpha Online as an opportunity uh, that you're leading us through. What are you excited about? What does it look like? Yeah, I think I'm more and more excited as we've crystallized mm. on uh, the way we're going to do it. Um, I think it's a unique opportunity. Uh, I'm trying to think of it as a book club, mm. but with a film series, which yeah. is Alpha. It's always been a great resource. Um, so I'm thinking of uh, small online groups, four to five people, mm. um, everyone reflecting uh, on the ideas presented in Alpha, interacting with them. A bit of a forum in which we used to build trust and relationships mm. uh, with those people. Um, I'm really excited to see how God will use online alpha. Yeah, yeah, it is exciting. Um, some of them might be nervous about inviting kind of their friends into that space. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, what would you say to them in, in terms of alpha? I think uh, God is showing us in this season um, how useful this mm. resource is. Mm. Uh, it's had great take up in other cities, I yeah. think I said that last week, uh, and we're hearing from our people actually that they're really excited to invite friends who uh, kind of otherwise come to an in-person alpha mm. or, um, you know, are, are more receptive in this season. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, so exciting. Uh, that's coming up soon. Uh, the other thing we've been doing to bless and seek to work with our community is uh, joining with Anger Care to provide food and resources for people. Today's the last day? Yeah, today's the last today's day. Today's the last day to bring your stuff in. So uh, get down here, practice social distancing, um, and uh, you can drop it off today. Um, yeah. We'd love to see some pasta and pasta sauce. <laughs> yes, pasta and pasta sauce. That's where it's at. Thanks, Miles. Thanks, Jerry. This old friend of mine, Helen. My best friend. My friend Colin invited me to try Alpha. Y recuerdo que mi papá me dijo, mira, hay comida gratis, ve. They handed me a invitation. It was just a random invitation. And I said like, why not? Why not? Let's try it. Why not? Let's go. And I found like a like a really awesome community of people. They helped me find who I was just by listening. Alpha helped me in the knowing of God. Empecé a entender que el amor Es de muchas maneras. I just knew. I was a different person from that moment on. I knew I had purpose. 
I, I felt really comfortable and like starting to invite my friends. I've seen Alpha really impact people that I work with. I would definitely encourage people to get involved. It's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. It all turned out to be life changing. My name is Simon and I go to the 9am service and uh, we're all missing you terribly. Susie and I can't wait to be back with you uh, worshipping together, particularly uh, really miss music and worshipping together, singing in the pews to our great God. Uh, can't wait for that day uh, to be back when we're together doing that again. Until that time, I'm going to lead us in prayer, so please join with me. Dear Heavenly Father, you are our powerful creator, great God and King. You are perfect in holiness, righteousness, wisdom and knowledge. God, you always keep your promises and love us with an everlasting love. You are all this, yet our praise of you falls so short of your reality. Accept, we pray, our worship and praise through all that Jesus our Saviour has done for us. Today as we celebrate Mother's Day, we thank you for creating mums and for their role in our lives. We thank you for their care and compassion, their strength, perseverance and devotion. We pray for all sorts of mums in our church community. We pray that they may know your goodness and love and that you would be their source of spiritual and physical strength. May your grace flow through them to others as they seek to live your way and grow more like Christ. We pray too, especially for whom this may be a hard day, if they, if they face challenging and complex relationships with either their children or children with mums. Please help them to know your love and compassion. We pray too for Andrew and Karen Dijon, our ministry partners serving you in West Asia. Thank you for Iray and Baha, whom they have handed over leadership of the church to and pray that this may be going well. We pray for Andrew and Karen as they have now moved to another city in West Asia after completing their long service leave. We pray particularly in this time of COVID-19 that Andrew and Karen may have many opportunities to witness to the salvation and comfort found in you and that many in West Asia may turn to the Lord Jesus as their saviour and source of comfort. We pray for those in West Asia, including Andrew and Karen, that you may protect them from the devastation brought by this virus. Finally, we give you thanks, Lord, for the Alpha course starting online at St. James at the end of May. Please place upon our hearts people we can be praying for and inviting. We pray that many may attend and that it may be a great way for non-believers or those new to Christianity to find answers to their questions. We pray that your spirit may work powerfully in people's hearts, revealing your love for them in Christ's death and resurrection and their need for forgiveness and to get right with you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Barry, it's lovely to see you online today. You're all the way up there in Coffs Harbour doing social isolation up there, but it's lovely to have you online. You're a 9 a.m. -er and you've been, well, and you go to 7 p.m. as well. So you're well known around the St. James scene. We're chatting this morning just about God's amazing grace. And I was wondering if you could tell us how you came to know the Lord Jesus. Well, a um, long time ago, at Billy Graham Crusade, probably uh, at least 35 years, I guess, ago, um, uh, Joan Young's brother, Colin, he, uh, he had a little Sunday school operating in Murrayfall and we were living at Murrayfall at the time and my kids, he knocked on the door and asked my kids to go to Sunday school and then later on he asked me to go and see Billy Graham and uh, I basically was doing a lot of water skiing at the time so I figured if I got nothing better off to do I might consider going. So I, I actually went to Billy Graham and I... I sort of was moved by some of the things that he said because I knew that I did quite a few things wrong in my life. So I figured if there, uh, I started thinking about God a bit more seriously and I figured that if there really is a God, um, 
he won't be too happy with me. So I was, I became quite scared. And then I, then I started to knock on Colin Blank's door nearly every night with questions, so, <laughs> uh, asking this, asking that. And I think it took me about a year to believe your sins could be forgiven and about the same amount of time to, to realise that Jesus was God in the flesh and realise that Jesus died for our sin. That, was, that took ages, ages and ages. One of the things I love about you, Barry, is you always tell me about how God is so good to you. What, what do you love about God's goodness to you? Well, I can't believe, you know, when I, when I first become a Christian, I figured that I wouldn't be doing any more sinning. That wouldn't be in my cat. You know, I wouldn't be in the category anymore, but I found out that wasn't quite as easy as it, as it seems. And uh, I, it, took me a, it took me quite a long time to know that he's, he's, his love is continuous, uh, that he continues forgiving your sins because I seem to be repeating myself so often. You know, I can't seem to get, the, get this sinning out of my system, you know. So I, a couple of times at church, I felt like I shouldn't have been there. I felt, you know, the, I shouldn't be here. I'm too rough, too, bit, too many rough edges. So, um, but, I, but I kept on thinking about different things. And this is over years and years and years. And I, I actually, I thought, well, if God has been loving people for time after time after time, he seems to be wasting a lot of time on loving people that don't seem to love him back or, or don't seem to, to give him any sort of respect at all. What do you yeah. love about sharing the gospel with the kids? What, what do you think is the most important thing to tell them? Oh, just basically, um, basically that God, God loves them, loves them heaps, heaps and heaps and heaps. It's been lovely to chat today and um, we'll, we'll see you, God willing, real soon. Okay, good on you, good on you. God bless. <laughs> Yeah.